because we've got two hydrogen uh, isotopes of hydrogen, so two deuterium nuclei joining together to make a helium-4 nucleus. Okay, this is an example of nuclear fusion. Okay, and remember that's what tends to happen. If this is our binding energy per nucleon graph, you tend to get two lighter nuclei joined together to make a heavier nucleus because the heavier nucleus has a greater binding energy per nucleon. And that means that um, it, it's more stable than these nuclei. And that means that energy tends to be released or energy is released. Okay, And you can see there's a big gain in the, uh, the binding energy per nucleon here. So a big amount of energy released. That's nuclear fusion because we're moving towards the more stable nucleus. Okay, So we've got two deuterium nuclei and they join together to make a helium nucleus. So deuterium is just an isotope of, um, of hydrogen. So hydrogen one has one proton in its nucleus. Deuterium, known as hydrogen two, has one proton and one neutron in its nucleus. And we're asked to calculate here the energy released in electron volts, all right, in this reaction, this nuclear fusion reaction. Now, the issue that we've got here is this. This mass is the mass of a deuterium atom. And this mass here is the mass of a helium atom. But we're dealing with nuclei here. Okay, now it doesn't actually matter because, um, I w well, I'll explain why now. Okay, so first of all, what we need to do is we need to calculate the mass of a um, we need to calculate the mass before and the mass afterwards okay so the mass beforehand the mass of the reactants you could say is equal to 2 times 2.0141 okay um, but what you should do as well, as I said, is, is take away the electron mass. Now, the mass of an electron is equal to 0 0.00054, let me get this right, 54858. Okay, so if this is the mass of the deuterium atom, the deuterium atom has one proton in it, and therefore one electron. So we, we should really take away the mass of the electron here. As I'll show you in a minute, it really doesn't matter, but I'm just doing this to make it really clear to you what's going on here, and just in case you come to a context where this does matter, because it, it could matter in certain contexts. Okay, so that's the mass of our deuterium nuclei, two of them. The mass of the deuterium atom take away its electron gives you the mass of the deuterium nucleus and then we're multiplying that by two because there are two of these deuterium nuclei okay so let's work this out two so we're going to get two times 2.0141 minus let's get this in brackets first okay minus the mass of the electron which is 0 0.12354 858 so that should give me 4.027 1064u so that's the mass of our reactants okay mass of two deuterium nuclei apologies for the poor writing there okay now, the next thing then is to say this. We're going to work out the mass of the helium nuclei, nucleus. Okay, so we're going to work out the mass of the helium nucleus, and that's going to be 4.002602. Take away, now helium has two protons, so it also has two electrons. So you've got to take away two electrons from that. Okay, and that's going to give us our mass. So that's going to be 4.002602 minus uh, 2 times 0 0.0005458. Eight. 
So that gives us 4.0015084U. So we can then work out the mass defect, okay? So delta M is going to be our mass defect. That's the difference in mass between the helium nucleus and the deuterium nuclei. Now the helium nucleus, as you know, is going to have less mass than the deuterium nuclei that we started off with. You know that because you know that for this to be energetically favourable, mass must be converted into energy in this reaction, okay? So delta M equals 4.0271064, which is the mass of the deuterium nuclei beforehand. Take away, or the two deuterium nuclei, I should say, take away the mass of the helium nucleus. So let's work that out. So it's going to be... 4.0271064, take away the mass of the helium nucleus, so that's going to give us 0 0.0256, 0 0.0156U. Okay, so that's our mass defect. Let's put that in a little box there, get that out of the way. Now, we can then work out what the energy equivalent of that is. Because the energy equivalent of that is going to be 0 0.02560156 multiplied by 931.5 mega electron volts. Okay. Whoops. Now, if we multiply that by 931.5, that gives us 23.85. We'll just round it up to, okay? And that's mega electron volts okay so that is our that is the energy released when two deuterium nuclei fuse together to make a helium nucleus these two nuclei have a greater mass than the helium and when they combine to make the helium the helium um, nucleus is, com is, is actually held together um, or bound together more strongly the helium nucleus is in a lower potential energy state than the two nuclei of um, deuterium. And that means that its potential energy is less than the potential energy of those two things combined. And that means that it's lost some of its mass and that mass has turned into this energy here. Okay, Or maybe it's, perhaps we shouldn't use the word lost its mass, but it's got a lower mass than the two nuclei that uh, fuse together to make it. And that mass has been converted into energy. Okay, so you could put onto this equation here plus 23.85 MeV. Sorry about the mess there. So the point is that the mass beforehand plus the mass and energy afterwards are equal according to the conservation of mass energy. So what that means is when these two deuterium nuclei, so when two of these join together and become helium-4, okay, the amount of energy released in that process is 23.85 mega electron volts. So that's the energy released when we do nuclear fusion of two deuterium nuclei to make a helium-4 nucleus. So that's a large gain in energy. So basically what's happening here is on this side of the curve below iron, nuclei tend the, the energetically favourable process is for nuclear fusion to occur where two light nuclei make a heavier nucleus with a higher binding energy per nucleon which releases energy. On this side... Heavy nuclei, the energetically favourable process is for them to split and undergo nuclear fission and make nuclei of higher binding energy per nucleon, and energy is then released. Interestingly, nuclear fusion, you can see that there's a greater gain in the binding energy per nucleon generally on this side. So actually, more energy is released per nucleon in nuclear fusion than in nuclear fission. Okay, More energy released per, nu per nucleon in nuclear fusion than in nuclear fission okay so when these two deuterium nuclei join together to make this helium nucleus this helium nucleus has a lower mass than the two deuterium nuclei added together that mass that is lost is converted into energy which is released and the helium nucleus has a lower potential energy than, than the two deuterium nuclei and that means that the nucleons are more tightly bound in the nucleus which means it requires more energy to pull out off one of those nucleons from that nucleus than it does to pull one nucleon from this nucleus there's more energy required to, to pull out an individual nucleon from this nucleus than there is from this nucleus because the nucleons are more tightly bound 
they're experiencing a greater um, a, a greater force of attraction from the strong force than here, um, or the or the, the the strong force is dominating more than the electromagnetic force. They're more tightly bound, and therefore they're more stable, and so on. Okay, there we go. The um, the high the deuterium the the isotope of deuterium has a binding energy of just over one. Okay, so just more than one mega electron volt. Okay, that's the binding energy per nucleon. So to remove one nucleon from deuterium requires just over one mega electron volt. The helium four two that it's making has a binding energy of just more than seven mega electron volts. So to remove a nucleon from helium requires seven mega electron volts. So you can see that there's a big gain in energy made here, okay? Um, and you can see that the amount of energy released here is 23.85 mega electron volts per nucleon, okay? So if you think about it, 23.85 divided by the number of nucleons gives you, uh, so 23.85 divided by four, because there's four nucleons in total in this situation gives you 5.96 mega electron volts so that's the difference you see between the binding energy per nucleon of, of, of these and the binding energy per nucleon of that okay it's about six mega electron volts so that's the amount of energy released per nucleon because the helium nucleus is more tightly bound it's in a lower energy state than the deuterium nuclei therefore its loss potential energy and that energy has been released. So as we join these two things together, energy is released about six mega electron volts per nucleon. And that means that um, it's an energetically favorable process, nuclear fusion, and this is more stable now, okay? So your helium nuclei could then join together to make a heavier nucleus if it results in a gain in the binding energy per nucleon, okay? Um, so there we go. Now I'm just going to show you, you can do exactly the same thing again without taking account of the electrons actually. Okay. So if you think about it, there are two electrons on this side and two electrons on that side. So when we take away the mass of two electrons from the reactants, we're also taking away the mass of two electrons from the products in order to get the mass of each of the nuclei. So we're doing the same thing to both sides, so it really doesn't matter. So let me just show you that, okay? So let's do it again without taking account of the electrons. So mass beforehand, this time, okay, is 2 times 2.0141078. Okay, that's the mass of two deuterium atoms. And the mass afterwards is going to be 4.002602, which is just the mass of a helium atom. We can then work out the uh, mass defect. Okay, so let's do that. So 2 times 2.0, whoops, let's do that again. 2 times 2.0141078 is 4.028203567. And then we can take away from that the f mass of the helium atom, okay? And that gives us a 0 0.02560156 U, okay? And I think you'll agree that that's exactly the same mass as we had when we took account of the electrons. And the reason for that, as I said, is when you do take away the two electrons from both sides, it cancels out, so it has no effect. So you can actually do the calculation with the masses of the atoms um, because the difference in mass doesn't affect the electrons, so to speak. It's, it's the difference in mass in the nucleus that we're calculating, okay?